What is up, you bunch of hunkos looking motherfuckers? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and welcome everybody to another, not a triple Diecast review, but a double Diecast review of an IndyCar set that I probably encourage you guys to strongly get because this is the first time ever we got a set for not only these two drivers, but for this team. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm presenting you guys the double Diecast review of Column Eilats and Augustine Canapino's 2023. Hunko's Hollinger Racing Diecast from Good Collectibles. And yeah, I know a lot of people are probably like, Brian, why on earth did you got both? Well, like I said, this is the first time ever we got for Mr. Ilot and Mr. Canapino, which I know a lot of English fans and uh, Argentinian fans are going to go absolutely nuts on these cars. But this is the first time ever we've got a Hunko's Racing Diecast. So here's the column Eilat car. Of course, this is right here. As you see, it's a matte finish with the metal chassis, rubber tires, green outline rims, just really great detail by Greenlight Collectibles. And there's the packaging if you guys want to see that. And on the back, you guys can read the information if you guys want to see it. As you see, he is a UK native. And um, yeah, he was an F1 reserve driver for Alfa Romeo. So how about that? And now getting on to this one, Augustine Canapino, one of your rookies for this year for the IndyCar series. Pretty much exactly the same, but there is a small difference that will showcase what's different about these two cars. And anybody who is a big Argentinian fan, you probably know who Augustine Canapino is. I mean, this guy is just a 15-time champion in supercars. I mean, just, or touring cars. Absolutely insane. But anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's be a bunch of Hunkos and let's unbox these uh, two diecasts from the 2023 Hunkos Hollinger Racing lineup. And alrighty guys, we got both these Hunkos diecasts out of their box, and let's go ahead in a miracle order, and let's start off with the guy who's making his second full-time year in the uh, in the NTT IndyCar Series season, uh, Column Eilat, guys. And you guys can see, this is just a freaking cool livery, man. You see, you get this nice, this is the newly rebranded Hunkos Hollinger Racing, which was uh, <laughs> just newly established, what, like, I want to say from, like, what, like, uh, a year or two ago. But uh, with Brad Hollinger, if you guys know, uh, he was, uh, I guess, one of the shareholders for the uh, F1 Williams team. So he got together with, uh, of course, the owner of Hunkos Racing. Uh, what was it? Uh, Ricardo Hunkos. And uh, they made a nice little rebrand. You see, that's the JHR, Hunkos Hollinger Racing. But I love the rebranding, guys. I mean, whoever came up with the rebranding really did a good job because this is such a sleek livery, guys. You got this nice bright green and the matte. And the matte black is just so cool. I mean, a lot of people don't realize that Green Collectibles can make a matte finish. But. But I'm really, uh, there is a big quality issue. Kind of looks like the aero screen kind of took like a big dump or something, dude. It looks like this car literally probably pulled a Kyle Kirkwood and just went, or maybe this is supposed to represent, uh, Column Eilat's, uh, Detroit car, um, when, when he got into it with, uh, Kirkwood. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, like I said, green light is not perfect. That aero screen definitely looks like it hit some sort of concrete or a, a tire or something, dude. I mean... Like, see, I mean, this is such just a cool detail, even with the quality issues. At least it has a colored Chevrolet logo. But you see, I mean, this is just such a unique livery, man. I mean, there's not really much sponsors on this car. Um, I know it's supposed to be like, what, the Visit Argentina car. Uh, there's supposed to be like, Visit, Vis yeah, I know, we're going to get to Augustine Canapino in a second. But there's supposed to be more logos right here and some more down here. But I guess this is, th this livery was based in, uh, I guess, on the January, uh, what, like, reveal. So... But, hey, I'm still thankful that we were able to get this, guys. And we do got a little bit of a quality issue right there. It looks like uh, some random string or squiggly line. I guess someone wanted to do an autograph by the mirror. But, <laughs> but as you see, guys, the chrome um, exhaust pipes, just so freaking cool. And you see there's, like, there's even a little tiny number 77, which is pretty cool. Uh, but, yeah, Column Eilat, guys. I mean, let me tell you what. I mean, th this guy kind of had a good start, guys, for the 2023 season. I mean, got to, I think he got, like, a top five finish at St. Petersburg. I was like, he might be a guy to watch out for. Um, sadly, I mean, what, like, besides that, uh, and uh, I think he got, like, a ninth place finish at Texas. Um, it's been kind of a hit or miss for Mr. Eilat, guys. Um, I mean, of course, he did make a pretty brilliant strategy call, guys, um, and led what like I think what like a few laps at this year's Indianapolis 500, but just the cars don't really have much, enough speed. I mean those Chevrolet cars. I mean I, I mean shit. I think what like uh, the, this chassis. I think or this one or I think Augustine his teammate Augustine. I think were based on the Carlin chassis, which we all know from uh, what like a few years ago when they all the Carlin cars got bumped at uh, the Indianapolis 500. But 
yeah, luckily, Colin Mylot was able to make his way into the show along with his teammates. So um, he, he was almost at the last chance qualifying for bump day, but he was able to find some speed and uh, actually had a decent run, guys, and survived this year's 500 compared to the previous year, which, you know, I did say he ran full time last year, but that was a lie. He did miss out on Detroit. So uh, Santushi, Santino Fruji, uh, Fruji was able to drive this car, but he did made also his uh, uh, he did make his debut uh, last year. I think what like they debuted the 77 car, which was like a mostly like a green livery like well like in the final three races of the 2021 season so but this team has such a lot of rich history i mean of course when you think of the hunkos cars you think of what happened at the 2019 indianapolis 500 bump day with kyle kaiser bumping the formula one champion fernando alonso the legend himself i mean and it's unfortunate that we were not able to get that diecast produced but Finally, I mean, I literally did not think that this was going to be produced. Just shows you that Greenlight was able. I mean, I don't know if it was Greenlight who wanted to make this or probably Hunkos wanted to get diecast, but regardless or not, this car has been selling. But it probably hasn't been selling out to the next car I'm about to show you guys, which is the Argentinian uh, native himself. Augustine Canapino, which I'm actually happy to actually say that correct now. So, as you can see, this livery is pretty much exactly the same, but the only difference you guys can probably tell is that the front wings are a lot more different. That's the only, and of course, the number as well. So, going to the side-by-side -side comparison, as I will be talking more about Augustine Canapino, but first time ever that we got Hunko's Hollinger Racing fielding two cars, which is very smart. I think that's a great way to develop their program. And having a touring car champion, a 15-time champion like Augustine Canapino is pretty cool. I mean, he... I mean, let's just say St. Petersburg has only been the best race for both these guys. I think Augustine, I think, finished... Uh, I don't know if he got a top 10 or not, guys, but I think he uh, his best finish was 12th, I think, and I was at St. Pete. Um, of course, the one race that we have to mention that really kind of took things off, because uh, let's just say the Argentina fans, they are very passionate about Augustine Canapino, and for good reasons. I mean, he is just a superstar in this team, and I'm glad we got a lot more. Uh, that, that's what I love about IndyCar, guys. IndyCar has such a great variety of fans. I mean, uh, when Ericsson won the 500, all the Swedish fans were just going nuts when Augustine Canapino and by the way we will be getting the Augustine Canapino visit Argentina livery that he raced at the 500 that will be produced so that's pretty cool we're gonna be getting that I mean very smart move by uh, Greenlight Collectibles and Hunko's Hollander Racing but it's exactly the same scheme um, or livery but this car I think I would recommend picking this one up compared to the iLot because when this car got released, it was selling, man, at the 500. It was selling, man. And you see, uh, there's a little bit of some quality issues right there, but Greenlight did a bit, pretty cool job. I didn't realize that the Hunko's Hollinger Racing uh, Green Lines also uh, right there where the cockpit is. So pretty nice details that we got. But again, just really nice. I don't know if they actually ran these uh, green rims or not because I'm looking at some of the photos and I think some of them they did, but and a little bit of a, a placement right there but just i think i just love the matte black and the white and the bright two different shades of green but back to what i was trying to say yeah let's just say these two weren't really the best teammates when it came to long beach i mean it got so bad to the point where literally all the argentina fans were literally sending death threats over Kyle Mila, which was pretty inappropriate i will say that i really lost a lot of respect to all the argentinian fans so if you guys don't know what happened, Kyle Mylott and Augustine Ampino basically had a pit at the same time, I think, once it came to the start of the Long Beach race. As you guys know, Kyle Kirkwood was able to win that race. But long story short, Mylott was making uh, pit stops uh, coming down to, I think, well, like, um, I want to say, like, a quarter of a race. And Augustine Canapino, I think, was trying to make a strategy. So he was leading the race. Um, and, well, like, Elio was right behind him trying to get a lap back. And then the rest of the leaders were right behind. So... Augustine did let some laps, but it kind of got stalled out because Kyle Mylott decided to literally exit the pits right at the same time the leaders were coming down, and it caused this whole traffic jam and caused Augustine Canapino to not only lose track position, but also ended his race because he made contact with many others when uh, he got when his teammate literally just cut him off. Um, I didn't realize as well, guys, there is also the differences in the front nose. See, there's a green J, and then here it's white. So small differences right there. Um, I can't really decide which one I like the best. I think the Augustine Campino probably looks a little bit better because there's more black, but um, really nice guys. But man, I would have loved to see some road course 164s, especially for these two guys since these two are more comfortable driving road courses. I will say that. But uh, yeah, I, I just so impressed that we were able to get both these diecasts. And these are definitely the two probably most obscure cards that you will get in your 2023 IndyCar collection. So 
definitely, definitely must get for both because like I said, it is a first time for both and usually when there's a first time for IndyCar diecast, uh, you won't probably see them ever again. So definitely recommend picking these guys up if you have the privilege to. But feel free to comment below if you have anything else to share about this diecast, uh, this double diecast review is again, I appreciate you guys' support on these IndyCar and diecast reviews. I mean, you guys know me, I love reviewing both, so I'm glad you guys and heck, there's even a lot more people who are getting into the IndyCar collection, so appreciate you guys for that. Um, just shows you for $10, you can get good quality diecasts and don't have to cut corners to make people happy. So, anyways, with that in mind, guys, hope you guys have a great 4th of July. And this has been OBB, the Diecast News Guy. And I will see you guys next time on another Diecast View. And, um, yeah, stay safe, y'all.